So here you have Joseph. Joseph's a carpenter from a small town in Israel. If he's a carpenter from a small town, relatively safe to conclude that he's probably not a real educated guy. He's a tradesman. He's a blue-collar guy. But he's a guy that God said, I can trust. Because the text says that he was a righteous man. And in that narrative, that means he could be trusted to do the right thing. But he's a guy nonetheless. So he's a righteous guy, but he's still a guy. Right? And he's a guy who's now engaged. His family probably set it up. Betrothed to the Jewish culture. What that meant is you were legally married, so it would require a divorce to break it up. Whereas here, if you're engaged, you could call it off with a tweet. A text. Not them. It would require an actual certificate of divorce. So it was betrothed. In fact, if you ever find yourself in the Gospel of John 14, Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and then I'm going to come back and get you, that we'd be together forever, probably following the idea of the Jewish wedding there. So they'd be betrothed. He would take that time, and he would go, and he would prepare a place for her. He probably would acquire land from his family. He would build her a home. And then when it was time, he would go halfway back to where she was, call her to himself. They'd have a massive, probably one-week wedding feast. And then they would be more like married in the terms that we would think about. So I want you just to picture Joseph's excited. His family gave him some land. He's building a house. Probably had some of the boys over. They're swinging hammers. They're building it. They're talking about the wedding. They're talking about all these things. And then one day he has to come to work and he has to go. She's pregnant. Whoa. I mean, that would rock your world. Pregnant. I mean, how many of your your buddies are going to be like, yeah, I'd marry her? It made me stop and think this week. I wonder what the stats are when spouses that have been unfaithful and have cheated on each other, that actually verbalize it to their friends versus those who don't. Or they have friends who would encourage them to reconcile and forgive versus those who don't. In other words, once you let that out, now you can deal with everyone's opinions. And for guys especially, because we have this thing called pride, at least most guys do, I've overcome mine. No, pride will keep you from forgiving. It can be brutal. But imagine this guy. The, The pain, like, wow. So the angel says, yeah, you know what, I I can understand that. And this angel is sent by God to tell him, you know what, it's going to be okay, Joseph. She wasn't unfaithful to you. She was saving herself for you. But God has chosen her and given her this incredible ministry to bear this son. Joseph had to step up because the penalty for adultery in that first century Jewish culture in the Old Testament was you'd be stoned to death. He's got to protect her from that. He's got to try and protect her reputation. And you see glimpses of it as you study the Bible. Jesus was mocked because his mom was unfaithful, supposedly. But when God wanted someone that he could trust, he chose 